Hey, Jeff Carlisi here from 38 Special, and we're rocking it up right here with Traders Nation. Welcome back. You are tuning in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have back with us once again, Daniel Shea. She's Director of Options and a Trader Specialist at Simpler Trading. Danielle, welcome back to Traders Nation. How are you today? And thank you so much. I'm doing great. How about yourself? Doing real good, thanks. Thanks for being back with us again. Hey, so... Um, so you know, news is pretty important in the in the market, especially for traders. And, we, and as traders, we got to really be careful on the type of news. But there are ways that we can trade news, especially uh, bad news, if you will. Is there a formula when it comes to that we should be looking at as traders with news? Yes, definitely. So one of the most important factors that I always look at as far as when I'm trying to decide if I should buy something after a news-related drop oh. is how strong it was previous to that news announcement. That is absolutely critical because you don't want to buy something that was already weak. Right, right. So so let me, let me take off on that because um, certainly there's a bias as technicals come into play and, and 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 if the technicals are strong and biased towards a certain way, whether it's bullish or bearish, um, sometimes bad news doesn't have an effect on the stock, does it? I mean, if everything's lined up and um, bad news all of a sudden comes out, unless it's catastrophic, it really doesn't have an effect on it, does it? No, and this is actually what I like to call the phoenixes. So yeah. the stocks that you will notice that they shake off bad news very quickly. Yeah. I like to call those the phoenixes because they rise from the ashes, nice. and those are especially the ones you like to jump on immediately. Sure, sure. So, but then there's other instances. For instance, like I mentioned, catastrophic Boeing would be one. The 737. Sadly, uh, a couple planes went down. A lot of souls lost. Um, and you almost hate to, you know, as a trader, traders almost hate to play those, right? But they still do. Um, some still do, certainly. So what about something like that? You just cannot get away from catastrophic news from a company. No, and I mean, Boeing especially was really, really interesting because, I mean, Boeing does not have, a, I mean, of course, Airbus is a competitor to Boeing, mm. but overall, I mean, Boeing beats Airbus in almost every way, shape, and form. It's also the top-weighted product in the Dow. It's one of the best in the industrials. Um, and it's been incredibly strong. So when Boeing fell, mm -hmm. I was starting to look at that for sure. a moment where I could buy it. But yeah. it was because even though the fall was pretty catastrophic, it still held key areas of support. Right. And that's important, isn't it? Because those key areas of support can tell somebody, especially if you're short it, right, um, where you may want to cover or where you may want to pick some up potentially, correct? Yes, exactly. And because Boeing was able to hold uh, the 200 period simple, mm -hmm. um, for me that was a that was a key sign that it could start to go up in the future. Yeah, how risky is shorting something like that with news coming out? Certainly, you got people that just have steel guts, right? But I mean, it's pretty risky um, to try to gauge the, the severity of the news to come in and short something, especially if it, it's already it's already moving uh, south, correct? Yes, exactly. So when I'm thinking about, well, first of all, I prefer to look at the strong names and buy them after bad news I see. versus trying to short them. But if something is already weak, for yeah. example, Walgreens had about a 12% fall on earnings, mm -hmm. but it was already very weak. So something like that, I would maybe consider shorting. Sure, sure. Uh, real quickly, because you mentioned Airbus. How did the other competitors to Boeing fare in the market after after those crashes come out? Was it was were traders in the markets looking at these competitors, for instance, like Airbus? Did, were they able to avoid any type of uh, negative impact on their stock in the market price? How did that come out? So, I mean, first of all, I think that. Airbus is a really interesting example because yeah. it it hasn't the stock has been all it's been strong this year and and overall you know it it really didn't take a hit the mm -hmm. way that Boeing did whatsoever it pulled mm -hmm. back slightly to the 21 EMA and it was fine but I think the other interesting factor that we need to continue watching here are going to be the airliners so you know Southwest in particular oh. has the largest amount mm -hmm. of 
the Boeing Max planes, right. um, that I would potentially see a little bit more impact there because of the amount of plane cancellations they're having to ha- or flight cancellations sure. that they're having now. Right. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because I'm actually going on Southwest here very soon. First thing I did, man, checked it. What what kind of plane are we on, right? Uh, and I, I'm happy to say, just for my own sake and my own mind frame, I'm on a seven a seven thirty seven seven hundred seven thirty seven eight hundred. So. As far as I know, that's not the max because I think uh, I think it actually specifies it's the max. So I can see that happening, and I think that's a great point because whoever, whatever airlines that have this particular type of plane, consumers like me that fly, we've got concerns about that, obviously for obvious reasons. So that's got to hit some of these airlines. Is it affecting any of these other airlines, uh, Alaska Air, or any other, anybody else, American Air? So let me check. I mean, the Southwest, looking, judging from the chart right now, yeah. Southwest looks pretty uh, affected by this news. And it has been able to climb over the course of the past few days. Yeah. Um, but it's running directly into resistance. Alaska, yes. Okay. Looking very impacted by this news I as see. well. Yeah. And because especially, the other thing, too, that you have to look at on a news-related event is how long it's going to be drawn out. And because... Oh. Um, all of these airlines are having to cancel so many flights, right. and the fixes aren't in place yet. It's going to be, you know, a continuous problem. And it looks to me like uh, United as well has been affected. So I would say across the airlines, yes, we are seeing an impact. They're trying to come back to life, right? Um, but so far, they're not looking so great. Well, you know as well as I do, these investigations. Are, are not fast. They're not quick at all. They're not meant to be. So these things, you're right. These things absolutely draw out forever, right? It could be an easy, good year, or better. They could be in a 12 to 24 month period before they even, you know, before they even this thing even settles out. So these airlines could be spotted with negative news about these max incidents for quite some time. So I would be cautious, and you may agree with that, right? Yes, definitely, and especially directly after the news hits, I typically wait for a couple days. And what I want to do is, I want to I want to watch for the price action to level out. So I want to see the price action find support, okay. hold the low from the initial hit, right. and then I'll watch a fifteen thirty minute chart to watch for it to start turning higher. Right. And so that's the point where. I'll start to get into it, but I will never do an aggressive strategy. So, for example, I like trading butterflies on something like this um, in the options world just because they're a pretty conservative strategy, um, and I don't like to have a large amount of capital invested in it because, just like you said, there's there's still news coming out, and it's going to be dragging out for a while. Yeah, absolutely right. So we, what we do, what so Daniel's talking about, we wait for it to level out. Do you wait for a confirmation maybe a day or two for that pivot to the upside? I do. So what I use is a moving average cross, really. So I just uh, wait for it to level off. Nice. And then I like to see the 15-minute moving average cross, 30-minute moving average cross for confirmation, and that's when I will start uh, placing some orders. That's a beautiful thing. We're almost out of time. I want to talk about good news trading. Certainly there is an anticipation. You know, folks try to anticipate news and good news, et cetera. Your thoughts on good news trading? So it kind of depends what it is. My favorite good news trading is the run into earnings, yeah. but I trade the anticipation of the good news, not the actual news. Right. So I will, for example, buy Microsoft 15 days ahead of earnings yeah. and ride it higher on the anticipation of the news sure. versus buying it on the actual news. So that is my favorite way to yeah. trade good news. Buy, buy, buy on newsroom or sell on news. Okay, there you have it. Where can we find you, Daniel? Where's the website? You can find me at 5startrader.com or simplertrading.com. Head on over to those websites today. Certainly check out Daniel Shea. Daniel Shea, Director of Options and a Trader Specialist. Thanks for being with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You bet. Stay tuned. We'll be right back.